Welcome into Jets Nation Radio episode 12 there, folks. I'm your host, Angus Hout, without Darnell Duff this week, unfortunately. Uh, we normally record on Sunday nights, but Grey Cup last night, watched the game with him, and then it was just a little bit too late for us to record, so... Recording today, and unfortunately, Darnell and my schedule just don't line up for this week, so he'll be back next week, and I cannot wait to have him back as my partner in crime on this podcast. So lots to get to. Um, first thing I'm going to say this week is, remember, two Connors are better than one. Um, so I'm going to say we're going to have more announcements about that later, but just, just keep that in mind. Um, so getting to the big question of the week, do NHLers go to the Olympics? And the more and more I'm hearing about it, uh, there's up to a five-week quarantine if a player develops COVID-19 while in China. And that's huge. We think about that as uh, Connor Hellebuck. If he's gone for five weeks post-Olympics, let's say he gets that, gets COVID on day 14 of the Olympics. Like, that's five weeks without Connor Hellebuck. That's relying on Birdman and Eric Comrie as... um, as the goaltenders, or you know, let's any number of NHLers could be gone. And do we want superstars like Steven Stamkos, Kyle Connor, Connor McDavid, Mark Scheifele just gone from the NHL for five, potentially up to five weeks? Like, ugh, that's pretty insane. I heard heard that the PA is calling NHL players this week just to see how they feel about going to the Olympics and. I wouldn't blame a lot of them if they didn't want to go. I know we love the Olympics. We love to see high competition, but I don't think this is the year, unfortunately. But the NHL is talking about bringing back the World Cup of Hockey, which I love it. And I think that would be a better chance for NHLers. Yeah, we don't get to see KHL players playing uh, for the European teams, primarily Russia. I know they're not Europe necessarily, but it'd be nice to see KHLers taking on the NHLers in that but uh, unfortunately, no go on that one. But it's uh, just the way she goes right now. So, yeah, I personally, I don't think the NHL is going to head to China for the Olympics. It's just too much of a... It's just too sad. And uh, I think it's just too much of a risk on ownership and all of that kind of stuff. Um, speaking of the pandemic, because... Everyone loves talking about that, and I definitely am not going to get ridiculed no matter what I say on this part. But um, Rick Westhead, he's a correspondent for TSN, CTV, and W5. If I'm going to listen to someone, he's going to be the guy I'm going to listen to. Uh, He had talked to Dr. Andrew Morris, who is uh, an expert within uh, diseases. Uh, Yeah, I didn't write down what his actual specialty was. I just have Dr. Andrew Morris. So Google him if you're actually curious about what he does. But um, Dr. Andrew Morris is saying that uh, the virus is doubling in Ontario every two to three days and estimates that there's going to be 10,000 or more cases every day in Ontario by December 31st. And he thinks that the Ontario government's going to close games to fans, which if, if if things are happening to that extent, yeah, maybe it is better for the GTA to shut down games for Toronto and like for both the Raptors and the Leafs, Marley's as well. And I guess this Ottawa Senators, I mean, I mean, they're going to go from 18 fans a night to zero. I don't know if it's going to affect them that much, but yeah, kind of spooky things happening with that pandemic. And I don't want to get into it too much, but if Ontario shuts down, I wouldn't be shocked if other teams stop the uh the fans from coming in because it's just you gotta put safety over profits and i know the nhl is not breaking in a lot of money but you know you can probably lose two to three weeks worth of money for for right now just to make sure that everybody's healthy and safe i mean like the calgary flames they're canceling games till the 19th i believe so it's just like there's lots of corona uh sebastian ajo i just read as i uh hopped on here is out with COVID. So it's just like, it seems like every other day we have somebody developing COVID within the NHL. I, listen, I'm not a guy that you want to listen to about COVID. I don't, I don't, I'm a radio guy. I'm not a doctor. I don't know anything. I'm just saying these are things that I have read and I, that's all I can say. So yeah, if you're mad about losing out on hockey games, I understand. I've been annoyed too, but you know, we got to do the safe thing, right? 
So that's just the way we got to look at it. So A, don't think the NHL is going to the Olympics. And B, wouldn't be surprised if fans were kicked out of the buildings so players could continue to play. And I wouldn't even be sure. Uh, I don't think we're going to go back to a bubble situation, but yeah, fans out of the building just to make sure people are safe. And I mean, like, look at the TV contracts. Like, they're the ones that are bringing in 99% of the money. Well, maybe not that high, but they're bringing in the large portion of the money. And then fans coming into the stands are bringing in some money, but not all of the money. So that's just the way we got to look at it is the NHL's already covered. Billionaires own the teams. Most of them are making pretty good money, minus the Arizona Coyotes, but that's their thing. And yeah, no, it's it's golden. I love it. And uh, I don't, well, I don't love it, but I just, I think if, yeah, if, if things are going south, then it just makes sense just to kick fans out of the building for a couple of days and then uh, get everything kind of back to level ground. Because I think 10,000 cases a day of COVID in Ontario is quite high. But again, I'm not an expert. I don't know anything. I'm just, this is what I have read. And I'm really sorry if anyone's like super mad about this. And I don't want to get into a whole COVID debate because it's just so annoying now. We've been at it for just about two years. Um, Blake Wheeler out. Uh, that knee injury. Uh, my partner and I were watching that game. Uh, what night was it? Whatever night that was. I believe Friday night. And she watched Blake Wheeler's knee and just like gasped and was like, He's, uh, she's a nurse, so she was like, I doubt that man ever plays a game of hockey again. He's in his mid-30s. Knee injuries are just brutal, and no one should... He, he's probably not coming back. Paul Maurice, though, he's saying week to week with uh, Wheeler. Wheeler's a warrior, so, you know, she doesn't have all of the uh, scans and whatever, but when she initially saw that, she reacted and was just like... He's done. And as a person that doesn't know a lot about a hockey, because like she doesn't know a lot about a hockey, so she doesn't understand how tenacious and amazing ho hockey players are. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah, week to week for Wheeler. I, w I honestly wouldn't be shocked if he was out till the end of the season. Like knee injuries suck. I've torn my PCL before. That's the same injury that McDavid had a few years ago. And I tore, they said 45% of it. It hurt. It took a while for me to he, to get going again. And it's still sore every now and then because I didn't heal it properly. So knowing that it's probably going to be easier for the Jets just to put him on long term. Because I think that's where he's going to thrive is just stay off like Nikita Kucherov last season until the last possible moment. That's where I could see some potential wiggle room. And maybe the, the Jets could get somebody that uh, fills the hole. And... Uh, makes up for Wheeler. I mean, yeah, Wheeler only scored one goal up and that was that same night against Vancouver. But dude had 18 assists. Like that's a lot of assists. That's so ridiculous and you know, I was kind of hoping that Wheeler was going to turn it around and just like have this unbelievable season. Like if he had put up 40 assists and like three goals, I would not have been mad. I don't know about you guys, but I would have been like, yeah, He's doing all right. And I mean, I finally got on board with the Blake Wheeler bandwagon. Like, yeah, go Blake Wheeler. I don't want you gone necessarily. But now it's like, oh, shoot. And like, you got to give him the credit. Like that dude is the definition of a warrior. What does he miss? Like 13 games his entire career. And five of those games were this season alone because of COVID. Like the dude's a beauty. And you have to give him lots of credit for where credit's due. So Awful to see Blake Wheeler's out for at least a couple of weeks, so says Paul Maurice at this time, but I wouldn't be shocked if he was out till the end of the season and just like Nikita kucherov it and then showed up for the playoffs and, I don't know, I wouldn't mind seeing him win MVP if they were to go all the way to the finals. Like, the dude's 35, he's playing in the NHL at an elite level. Yeah, it took him a little bit to get going. Again, COVID, I think he was just worn out from having it. And finally got himself back to up to up to a position where it's like, oh, Blake Wheeler's actually still pretty good. And I know Darnell and I and a couple of my buddies were just like, it's time to get rid of Blake Wheeler, blah, blah, blah. And now I'm like, oh, that guy was just about to like cross the threshold of being the eight million dollar player that he is. So it sucks and get better, Blake. I 
yeah, genuinely, I'm rooting for you. And if you Nikita Kucherov it and you just wait till the uh, end of the season to come back, maybe come back for game 82, I won't judge you at all. <laughs> um, Pionk is uh, back to being day-to-day, -day and he was out practicing with the boys, so he should be back for tomorrow's game against Buffalo. Neon knee collision with Sandin. Sandin. And his quote um, is, it made me sick. He's a great young D-man, and I never want to cut his career short, not even by a game. And, like, you hear something like that, and I listen to that interview, and you're just like, yeah, that guy actually means it. He's legitimately sorry that that happened. And the fact that Jason Spezza then need Neil Pionk last Sunday night, uh, two Sundays ago, I guess now, but it's ridiculous. And six games for a knee to the head after an accidental knee on knee. And I mean, like, yeah, Neil Pionk, I believe two games is fair for a knee on knee. I believe that's a cut and drive penalty. You just need to say, like, yep, that dude, need, that was a knee on knee. I know it was could have been avoidable. That's two games automatically, first time suspension, easy as that. And I think that's the same thing with the NHL. Like, the NHL just needs to have the rule book printed out for everyone. It's like, if you commit a knee on knee one, two, or three times, like, you know, your first time, two games, your second time is like six games and your third one, it's worth 20 games right there and blah, 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 whatever. And like, that's the way I'm looking at it. It's like the NHL just needs to have a, sh just a clear rule book. And it's like, hey, we saw a board. You know, we watched Mark Shifley get boarded. We watched Ehlers get boarded the other night. We're like almost weekly, we watch Nick Ehlers get boarded. And it's, it's really disheartening that the NHL obviously is not taking care of their players especially their superstars. It's like, well, you know, Ryan Reeves gets to run around and be a complete knob. And yeah, the NHL of yesteryear had this kind of stuff happening, but they also allowed goons to like take care of things. So with the age of the goon gone, it kind of sucks. And, you know, these guys think they can just get away with whatever the hell they want. And they really shouldn't. So I'm... I'm disappointed in the NHL for not having clear rules on injuries or on um, injuries caused by other players. Let's call it that. And like, you know, the rule book's pretty set for a game day, but when it comes to suspensions, there's nothing happening and it needs to be a clear defined rule book. It's not, well, George Peros is feeling because George Peros, well, he can have whatever opinion he wants about a player and then punish a, a player accordingly. So if he doesn't like a guy because they play for, let's say, not the Ducks or not Montreal, which are two teams he played for, then he's off. Like I don't know. I I hate the fact that a goon is the NHL PA uh, safety guy. It's the it's a terrible choice. It's a bad look for the NHL. So I think as soon as George Peros's contract is gone, I mean personally, I would just fire him right now. But let's look at this diplomatically and business wise. You wait till his contract's out and you go find a superstar. You go find a Paul Correa, a Tinu Solani, guys who have been injured and they can make these legitimate calls for these future players and be like, yeah, you know, Nazem Kadri, Jordan Bennington, you know, swing his stick at players. Like that should have been a couple games. And, you know, that guy's wielding a, a weapon. Like, have you ever been hit by a hockey, like a goaltender blade? It hurts. Like, yeah, I've been tapped before, but I've never like, I couldn't imagine somebody like clapping me, clapping someone else with it. That's like a baseball bat. So the NHL should have been on top of that one. That's a while ago. If you want to look that one up, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. But long and short, the NHL needs to have a strict rule book on games for suspensions. And you hit suspension number, let's just say number five. That's what I would do. You get suspended five times in your career, you're gone. Your contract is null and void. Your everything is just gone. Your NHL career is done. You can go play in the minors or you can go into Russia. You can go play in Europe. I don't care where you're playing. After five suspensions, you should be done. Um, yeah, that's my little rant on the fact that the NHL is just bad at negating penalty or uh, bad at suspensions. And like, you know, I'm just looking, I'm just thinking back to like PK Subban. He slew footed Ehlers. Uh, Ehlers, again, run into the board. So there's so much crap we're seeing in the NHL. And that's why I'm going back to what I said earlier this season, where the NHL needs to have a guy sitting in the stands and he can make the calls. 
Like, yeah, refs should be on the ice, but we need somebody actually making the calls above who can see the entire game and, you know, just make things happen properly. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, good to see Neil Pionk's coming back. Uh, he probably should be back either today or uh, next game or the game after, which I believe I, is the capital. So he'll either be back Thursday or Tuesday this week, 100%. Um, looking at... One of my favorite players of the Jets this year is Svechnikov. Like, he looks so good with PLD and, I believe, Ehlers on the other wing. So, like, that was a solid little line, and it's it's gone. And Svechy, he's not a fourth-line guy. He should be a second-line guy. Easy. He plays with tenacity. He I like his game a lot, but he's not a fourth-line guy. And if the Jets were smart right now, They'd be looking at trying to move out a Nathan Ballyu contract and trying to also like throw in Svechnikov as a sweetener, especially when we get down to the to the uh, to the playoffs when we get to the day the dra- not the draft day when trading day. Holy, this is a rough one. I need a partner here. <laughs> but Svechnikov should be an easy sell to anyone's team, especially if they're also looking to get to the playoffs. Because you know Paul Maurice isn't going to use Svechnikov in a second or first line role, which is ridiculous, because he's so sharp there. So, I, I, like, I'm looking at him, he's a he's a waste of on the fourth line, and I know I love Andrew Kopp playing on the top line when Wheeler's out, but put Andrew Kopp back on the third line and get Svechi off the fourth and move him up to the second, first line. Get him in the top six. Because I think that's going to get the Jets more goals in the long run. And if the Jets are, whatever re- for whatever reason, end up falling out of a playoff spot legitimately, because they're contending for a wild card spot at this point, um, they're going to need something to give them that boost. So they're going to need a physical player to come in and be... I think they need an electric fourth line guy who's just a great grinder. and Like... I don't know who the equivalent of Matt Hendricks would be, but if the Jets could find the next Matt Hendricks, just an old guy that just, you know, brings a spark to the room, but also just, like, plays pretty decent. He can top on and off your lines. That's what the Jets are needing right now. They need a glue guy. It's Sechi, love him, fun guy, love to see him play, but uh, he's not the guy that you want to see on the fourth line right now. So... Svechi needs to come up to the top six. Cop needs to come off the top six. And Harkins can just stay fourth line at this point. Or, hell, he could probably even get himself up onto the top six. Either way, it just like something needs to happen with Svechnikov. He's a really cheap guy who can produce a lot of points for a team. So, Svechi, something needs to happen there. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's just a couple of quick takes on my part. Uh, the Jets next week. I was thinking about uh, after Toronto's game on last Sunday night or two Sundays ago. Is like, are the Jets the most hated team in the NHL? Or are the Jets the most hated Canadian team in the NHL right now? Especially amongst other Canadian teams. I know Oilers fans love to hate on the Jets. I know Leafs fans are now just super mad at us because of that Sunday game. And it's just like... I just wonder, like the beef between Calgary and Winnipeg prior to the pandemic with Matty Kachuk, I love it. And like even the bubble game where Mark Shifley was unfortunately injured. Uh, it's just like, there's just so much little things there. It's like, yeah, I think Winnipeg is now the most hated Canadian team amongst other Canadian fans. So embrace it. Be the heel there, everyone here in Winnipeg. Believe that you are the heel. And it's like, yeah, we're friendly Manitoba, but we'll kick your ass when it comes to hockey. Make Canadian fans uncomfortable, you know? Yeah, you might want to come to Manitoba to go check out our great fishing, but just remember, the Jets can kick your ass. And that's what I love to see about it. Just like everyone's getting rattled at Winnipeg. So let's be the heels. Let's just lean into it and become the evil team of the Canadians' teams. Like, I don't know. I just think it's fun to be like a little bit of a heel. And if we can buy into it and just piss off everyone else in the uh, in Canada, we might as well do it because we are back-to-back Great Cup champions as well. I forgot to shout out the Bombers at the top of this. Congratulations, you guys, for being back-to-back champions in three years. 
That's a weird one to say. But yeah, back-to-back champions for the Bombers. And why not let the Jets just be the evil team of the Canadian division? Quote-unquote, if it were to exist again. So, yeah, I don't know. I really hope that we can just, like, piss off every other fan base. Get mean, well, don't get mean, but get get a little bit loud on Twitter and just, like, run your mouth about other teams there, y'all, you Jets fans. Okay, Jets next week. They are going to be taking on the the Sabres on Tuesday, Caps on Thursday, and Blues next Sunday at 2 o'clock, so matinee game. Not a huge fan of matinee games, so I'm going to call that one a loss for the Jets. It would be awesome to see the Jets take on the Blues and win, but I'm not going to call a big one there. But I'm going to call Sabres overtime loss because they are in a... No, sorry, overtime win for the Sabres. That's what I'm going to call because the Sabres are just spinning out of control. I had looked up. They have lost, They have won two games in their last 13, so... I'll, but they've been showing up to overtime, so like, yeah, I'll take uh, I'll take an overtime win for the Jets on Tuesday. Caps, I'm gonna call just a I don't know. Caps are like a really funny team because we don't see enough of Ovi, but we always hear about Ovi, and like I don't watch enough of the Capitals to know how good they really are. I know they're like one of the best teams in the Metro, so uh, you know what? Here's what I'm gonna say. Ovi scores a hat trick, Caps win. Ovi doesn't score anything more than one, Jets win. So I'm split on it, but uh, I'm going to say Jets win because I don't think Ovi's going to beat Helly that much. So overtime win on Tuesday, regulation win on Thursday, and a straight up loss on Sunday to the Blues just because matinee Sunday games are super weird and I don't like them. And the Jets just haven't had luck in their. Well, the one game they have had in the matinee this uh, year. All right, final segment of the show. Hot and cold performers. Uh, So my hot performer of the week, obviously, Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Back-to-back Grey Cup champions. Respect it. And they did it in the home field of the Ticats. And so you just, you can't not love the Blue Bombers for going in, beating Hamilton and Hamilton and shaming all of those Hamilton fans, including the Arkells, who are all excited about their home team being in Hamilton, playing for the Grey Cup. And uh, I was going to give the cold performer to the Arkells for their disastrous halftime show. I was not a huge fan, and I like the Arkells. But John Tortorella has got to go. He's my cold performer of the week, saying that Zegra's goal is like, not a thing that's going to be good for hockey in the long run. Like, what are you saying, you fool? Like, highlights like that are impressive. You want to bring in another community of people who don't necessarily love hockey? That's going to impress them. I want to see that goal. And just because John Tortorella won a cup, and it's a farce of a cup, because Calgary should have won in 2004. I'm a guy that grew up in northern Alberta. I hate the Flames. They should have won the Cup in 2004. So John Tortorella really doesn't have a Stanley Cup, in my opinion. He was there too long. And because he's a mean coach, he thinks he can be just, like, slightly agitated, like Stephen A. Smith. Get out of here, John Tortorella. Don't say, like, this this wouldn't fly in 2000s or late 90s hockey. That was anywhere between 17 and 25 years ago, you, you knob. So... John Tortorella, you just get out of here. Stop trying to be the agitator of hockey because you're not doing a good job of it. You're making an ass of yourself. And yeah, you're my cold performer for having stupid ass opinions. And you and your stupid non-winning Stanley Cup. Still don't agree with that. And debate me if you want, but Calgary should have won the Cup in 2004. <laughs> yeah, I'm still holding on to that. And I shouldn't because I don't care about the Flames. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for Jets Nation Radio episode 12. 12. Uh, There, folks. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, We will have Darnell Duff back next week. He will be my co-host, and I am excited to have him back. And it will be the Christmas extravaganza next week as well. So if you got questions for us, you just want to know stuff about our lives or our opinions on certain hockey takes, leave us a comment in the comments below if you're listening on YouTube. And I just want to apologize to those who listen on Spotify and other podcast sites uh, for last week. I don't know what happened. My computer just would not allow, allow that to happen. So 
We uh, we weren't on Spotify, and I'm incredibly sorry about that. But you can always catch us on YouTube. Make sure to like, follow, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Tell your friends. Leave a comment. Subscribe. I don't know what other YouTubers say. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just a dude that talks about hockey. Either way, do the thing. And have yourself a wonderful week. And I will be back on Sunday next week. Peace and grace, friends.